Good evening, everyone. TSB Television proudly presents high school girls basketball. Today we head to St. Paul Academy and their historic Reeds Gymnasium for a non-conference game featuring the St. Paul Academy Spartans hosting the Heritage Christian Academy Eagles. Stick around, this exciting game will start in a few minutes. Welcome everyone, I'm Mike Beaton, joined by Michael Johnson. Now, Michael, if you looked at the records, SPA 4 and 18, Heritage 5 and 18, you might think that the two are struggling, but they have a much bigger focus than the win-loss column. They do, Mike. They're, they're two similar teams, actually, but St. Paul Academy is a young team. They're rebuilding. They've got a new coach, Ann Voltmer, who was at Minnesota State University. She played on some great basketball teams there. In fact, they won a national championship the year after she was finished playing. And the last year she played, they made it to the Sweet 16, so she knows the taste of the big dance. And how does that help an SPA program rebuild with a roster that has five eighth graders? Well, she really knows what it's like to be part of a rebuilding program. When she was a freshman at Minnesota State, they were totally rebuilding. So here at St. Paul Academy, she doesn't have a senior on the roster. She's got a young team. She's got eighth graders, ninth graders, and they're rebuilding, but doing a, a great job. Now, Heritage, a member of the Minnesota Christian Athletic Association, coming in here tonight. What are they looking for with the game against a young and building SBA team? I think Heritage is going to find that they're in a they're going to be in a tough battle, just like the conference that they play in. And St. Paul Academy, they're no strangers to tough contests. They're in the Tri Metro uh, con Conference, and the Tri Metro Conference is one of the toughest in all of basketball in the state of Minnesota. They feature teams like De La Salle, Minnehaha Academy, St. Croix Lutheran, St. Anthony. Every night it's a battle for SBA. And we know what that means. We covered De La Salle Minnehaha earlier this season. But right now, let's take a look at our keys to the game. Heritage Christian Academy will go first. They just want to execute the fundamentals and play well. That's been the motto all season. Head coach Milt Sunday, not too complicated, very simplistic, which for a team like Heritage Christian Academy is a good building block. Michael, what does SPA need to do? Well, Mike, in my opinion, SPA has three things they need to do to, to win the ball game today. Number one, they need to get a jump on Heritage Christian. They need to get out and score early, not play from behind like they've done a lot this season. Number two, they need to limit their turnovers. If you limit turnovers, you give yourself a chance to score points. And number three, they need to control the board both on offense and defense. If they do that, I think they've got a good chance of winning the game. So who will come out on top tonight? Stick around to find out. The starting lineups are coming up next. Some rowdy fans tonight here at Briggs Gymnasium cheering on St. Paul Academy. We'll get to our starting lineups momentarily, but first we're going to watch them take the court.
let's recap the starting lineups for you. Heritage Christian Academy, again, the starting five will be Natalie Nelson, number four at forward, number 10, Rebecca Walk at guard, number 20, Lauren Anderson at forward, number 24, Natalie Pieper at guard, and number 30, Kate Laird at center. Heritage Christian Academy's marquee player is Anderson. Averaging nearly a double-double with 11.3 points per game, 9.2 rebounds per game. Also getting 2.6 steals a game. SPA will have a tough assignment on their hands with Anderson. The SBA starting five will be Lauren Adamite, number 11 at forward, number 12, Erica Miller at forward, Number 14, Barry Applebaum at guard. Number 20, Maggie Johnson at forward. And number 15, Molly Fiedler at guard. No player averaging above 10 points for SPA. But they've had some close games. Heritage Christian will get the first possession. That includes a near comeback against Brooklyn Center last week. They were down by 17 at halftime, lost by one, but held Brooklyn Center to 10 points. And here they come, moving the ball up now. It's Fiedler, the eighth grader. For three, bullseye, Maggie Johnson. Good shot by Maggie. And she can get hot from the three-point line, and she wastes no time doing so. Mike, in their game against Brooklyn Center, they were actually down by as many as 25 points before they mounted their comeback, just falling one point short. However, they saw it as an improvement, and that's been their focus all season long with Anna Voltmer in her first season coaching the Spartans. Just the moral victories, the individual game. Johnson again, short this time. Not necessarily worried about the win-loss column. And when you've got five eighth graders and a lot of freshmen on a young team, that's the best way to go. Don't worry about how many wins, how many losses you get. Just focus on getting better because you know you're going to have that same core of players for the next few years. That's right. Say, hey Mike, the SBA crowd is very boisterous tonight. They're making a lot of noise. That's got to be fun for the players tonight. They were enthusiastic for the national anthem. Mike, watch for SBA to try to get the ball inside to Erica Miller. She's strong. Well, right now their focus seems to be on Johnson. <laughs> well, sometimes the outside shot will loosen up the defense and they'll get some easy inside buckets. Foul on Johnson as she tried to block Laird. That will send Laird to the free throw line. Laird with just 2.1 points per game on the season, but getting five rebounds per game. <laughs> Heritage Christian coached by former Minnesota Viking, Milt Sunday. So a lot of Minnesota ties among the coaching staff on both teams. You have Anna Voltmer, who as we mentioned in the Open, played on the MSU Mankato Mavericks team that won the Division II championship the year she left, but you know she made it to the Sweet 16. And then you've got Sunday, who played a lot of Sundays for the purple and gold here at the old Metropolitan Stadium. Fiedler. Oh, nice shot. Nice it is, and that gives SPA a 5-1 lead in the early minutes of half number one. Mike, that was good ball movement by the Spartans. They really worked it around the court and found the, found the open person. Anderson, yes. Applebaum, out. And the layup, Lauren Adamite with the bank. It's 7-3, Spartans over Eagles. Mike. Johnson going for the steal, over pursues, but Lair can't get the bunny. You were saying? Lauren Adamite, she's just a sophomore, but she's one of the leading scorers for the Spartans this season. Fiedler traveled 
Lost the handle a bit. Again, though, she's an eighth grader, and that's something I imagine will fade away with time. Five eighth graders, three freshmen on this SBA team. And they got a lot younger, as Anderson inside again, a lot younger when they lost two of their top players to injury, Io Jones and Jenna O'Brien, who we covered many years ago. Applebaum can't get the long two. Blair with the rebound. We O'Brien was a seventh grader when we televised with one of my first games at play-by-play -play when SBA beat Como Park. Applebaum, one-on-one, -on -one, and she's fouled. Rebecca Walk will be charged with the foul. Mike, it looks like the Spartans are going to have to key on Lauren Anderson because she's got some good, strong moves to the basket, and I believe she's scored most of their points. She has four already right now. Adam at the, or Applebaum at the line. Fastest player on the team. This is the first. This is both. Anderson again. That's six points. We're tied, seven all. Johnson feeling it. Bullseye. Second tray, two of four from long distance is Maggie Johnson. Oh, Todd would be loving to see this, I'm sure. Heritage turns it over. Mike, Lauren Anderson, she's the second leading scorer uh, this season for Heritage Christian after Natalie Piper. Adamite saves it. Johnson, again, not this time. Rebound, Piper. Going to Nelson. Keeper thought about a three, drives inside, can't get the runner. Scramble, tie up. SPA with the possession arrow, 13-44 left. This game reminds me of uh, one of the early games that we did over at the Chrysler Gymnasium back at the old Mounds Park Academy campus, of course, now they're in the Lansing Sports Center. And you wonder, you know, we did a game at Chrysler, then they got the Sports Center, over Lansing Sports Center, very nice facility. You think we see the same thing for SPA? Well, I think the, the Spartans have some plans for a new Sports Center, so they might see something in the next few years, Mike. Well, if this keeps up, we might get more requests from schools that are looking for upgrades. <laughs> but Anna Voltner told me, MSU Mankato, a very big gym. Adamite, no good. Her first year had trouble getting fan support, and then as they built up and became contenders as they did, they had no trouble getting fans to come. And Voltner is not alone as far as Maverick representation bringing Jamie Kynitz and Ashley Stiles with their Jamie, a teammate of Voltmers throughout their college career. That's right, Jamie was the point guard on their team all four years they played basketball together. Miller can't handle it. And will be called for the foul on Nelson. But while we have a moment, she requested that we do this before the game and we're going to do with it now, Erica Miller it turns 17 today. This is her 17th birthday, so a happy birthday to Erica Miller as she looks to get SPA a birthday present. Happy birthday, Erica. Peeper drains the three. We're tied up at 10. She's their leading scorer, Mike. They're going to have to keep an eye on her on the outside. And just as you see that, she gets a steal, but it's short on the layup. SPA ball. Spartans catch a break. Finish up on Miller's. <laughs> Jokingly in excitement, she said she could buy a dry ice, which uh, makes great Halloween decor. But I'm sure there'll be a big birthday cake, some ice cream tonight. 
Anderson with the rebound. Driving through, and Fiedler will be called for the foul. Yeah, blocking foul on Molly Fiedler. Should be on the floor. Steady improvement throughout the year, and that's something that Volmer has noticed with her team all season. They've been improving, they're learning to play 36 minutes, and I think as they get older, they'll have the stamina. When you play varsity ball in eighth grade, you have to play for 36 minutes. It's a tough chore. Maggie Johnson making it look easy. She has eight points. That was a good play by Erica Miller. She didn't have a shot. She kicked it back out. And Maggie found the open lane. Johnson, the team's leading scorer, nine and a half a game. She's already near her average. Are we at Cameron Indoor Stadium, or is that just me? They're enjoying themselves and making a lot of noise. For three, no good. Rebound, no put back. Jump ball, this time it's Heritage with the possession arrow. In the game for the Eagles is Rachel Krellin, number 23. I tell you, Mike, the Spartans need to do a better job of boxing out. Heritage Christian's getting multiple shots there and just put a body on them. There was an example right there. They missed the box out. Spartans are getting lucky, though. Heritage not doing much to capitalize on that, and it's working to SPA's advantage. Another jump ball. This time the Spartans will have possession. Hannah Johnson, number 35, one of the young players we were talking about, 5'6 freshman, now in the game. There is a family connection there, Mike. Hannah Johnson, a first cousin to Maggie Johnson. Wide on the shot. Nice job from Fiedler to deflect the pass. It saves Heritage ball, but messes up the cycle a little bit. Yeah, great hustle by Molly. By any chance, the two Johnsons, would they be related to Yale Johnson, who crashed into the tables a few years ago? That's right. Park Academy. One's a sister and one's a cousin. We'll let you figure out who. 10.44 left in half number one. Nelson, left, and the rebound goes to Heritage, and with the rainbow shot, it's Jessica Hughesby, 5'7", senior guard. Spartans got to do a better job of boxing out. Too many easy chances for Heritage. Maggie Johnson, not that time. Good rebound by Barry Applebaum. And you can't fault Johnson for doing her best to pick up the slack at least from the defensive standpoint. Applebaum, not this time. Getting some open looks. It's still early though. First half, as I always say, the appetizer. The second half is the entree. That's right. Anderson, 15-footer. Anderson's playing a great game for Heritage Christian. They gotta figure out a way to stop her. And Anna Voltmer's gonna call timeout to discuss how to stop Anderson. 14-12, Heritage Christian over SPA, 9.47 left in the first half. And we talked about Voltmer playing at MSU Mankato. What does it mean to be playing at this level? And she said in many ways, it's like being at MSU all over again. That's right, Mike. It is a rebuilding project here and she's been through it before and she's confident that she can take this team to the next level. And just to give you a little background, on Anna, she's originally from Decorah, Iowa, and she was recruited by Minnesota State University. I know it as Mankato State from so many years, but <laughs> Minnesota State, and actually that was the name of the fictitious school back on, if you recall the show, Coach? Yes. Minnesota yes. State. Well, it, it came to fruition. And the reason why they used that fictitious name was, uh, I believe the show was going to use the University of Minnesota, but they weren't able to get the approval from what I've heard uh, here and there, so they came up with the fictitious name. And actually, in the state soccer tournament, uh, one of the schools, I believe it was Minneapolis Southwest, that performed that theme, which had me scratch in my head. I'm like, high school kids know about coach, right. but uh, right. it holds a special place in our hearts, at, being that the setting was in Minnesota, and they used a lot of Big Ten schools. 
There's a turnover on the Spartans. Heritage Christian ball. But to finish up on Voltmer, she said she was looking for a program that valued both academics and athletics as much as I do, and SPA seemed to be a perfect fit. And again, just baby steps. Building a program year by year, not overnight. Definitely. Oh. Heritage Christian finding their stroke early. That's Hughes B again. She has four. Mike, SBA's in a 2-3 zone, but they've got to get out on top of it. They're going to hit those open shots. When do, you, do you think they should go to man? SBA ball. Yeah, I believe they're in a zone to stop Miss Anderson, and we'll see if it, if it happens, but they've got to come out on the shooters on the side. Johnson inside, short, gets her own rebound. And the cleanup. Don't tell me she's padding her stats now. Good play by Maggie Johnson. She's already passed her scoring average. Walk to Nelson. Laird couldn't handle the pass. Good hustle, Erica Miller. And it pays off with the turnover, so the birthday girl gets a birthday present. And the official had not signaled to inbound yet, so they're going to do it over. Now it's official. Johnson thought about it. Short. Rebound, Johnson. Oh! And a jump ball. Possession goes to Heritage Christian. For a moment, it looked like Maggie jo or Hannah Johnson was going to get called for the foul. Yeah, Hannah was right there. Good play, ball to not stay in the hoop. We almost had a Johnson and Johnson show, but there's still plenty of time for one. Laird missed the handle, but puts it in anyway. 18-14, Heritage Christian over SPA. Back and forth game so far. Anderson can't get the steal, but SPA has to be careful. I think that near steal is going to remind them not to get too relaxed in the passing lanes. There's a foul over the back. Yes, on Laird. Mike, let's see what SPA can do with their inbounds play here. Hannah Johnson to inbound. Adam I can't hit the three. Laird with the rebound. Going to Peeper, out to walk, to Peeper again, and another tie-up. Erica Miller, great hustle. She was on top of that. Hardest working player on the team, uses her left hand very well and uses her eyes very well too to get in there for the jump ball. Fiedler avoids the traveling call this time. Adamite, not hitting the threes. But you have to like how she got herself open just using her pivot. Yeah, that was a wide open look. If SPA can start hitting some more open looks, I think they'll give Heritage Christian something to think about. But still a lot of time left, seven and a half to go in the first. Good patience by Heritage Christian. They're looking to get the ball inside. Here's their scorer. Heritage is taking their time. Oh. And patience pays off. It's Anderson again. She is hot. Anderson versus Johnson. It, it seems that's how this game is going to go. Question may come down to who can provide the support. Adamite is stripped. Heritage with numbers, and Hughesby is too strong. Miller with the rebound, finding Fiedler. The Spartans got to find a way, Mike, to get the ball inside. If they're not going in from the outside, you got to find other ways to score. If that's a difficulty making outside shots, SPA ball, 626 in the first. Well, Mike, number 30 of Heritage Christian definitely has a height advantage over Erica Miller. 
That's Kate Laird, she's 5'10". Applebaum was looking for Maggie Johnson, and Laird was there for the steal, but now she loses it. Someone loses their headband, it's Laird. Foul on 3-0. That's Laird, so she gets called for the foul. Johnson to Johnson. Hannah, short. Hughesby has numbers. Kicks out. And SBA not giving up on any play. Good hustle there by Maggie Johnson. She denied that pass. Spartans need a stop here. Down by six. They jumped out to a quick start. Since then, Heritage has been on the run. Peeper. That's off. It is off, and Hannah Johnson with the board. There's a good box out by the Spartans. Maggie. Applebaum with the rebound. And now it's an open ball. Heritage with the possession. Spartans are getting good looks, Mike. They just can't hit that shot. to walk, air ball. It will say Heritage ball. Now we have a substitution. Krellen going out and in goes Lauren Anderson who has 10 points. Nelson is still scoreless. Applebaum with the rebound. New player in for SPA, loses the ball to Anderson. Eagles again with numbers. Going to Hughesby, she's open and she's short again. Barry Applebaum with the rebound and she was foul. That she was. Jonte Claiborne is the player in for the Spartans, number 33. Another one of the young players. She's a freshman. Now she has the ball. Goes out to Adamite. And Adamite finally breaks her funk. She has six. Only two SPA players have scored. Maggie Johnson and Adamite. That was good movement. They found the open person and Lauren buried that shot. SPA will take anything they can get. Right now, they've been in a funk. And Claiborne will be called for the foul on Peeper. That's a 15 foul, Mike, on SPA. Heritage Christian has four. Peeper at the line. And she buries it, despite the heckling of the hometown crowd. Peeper with 10.4 points per game. Good ball handler, good shooter. That's what Milt Sunday told us. But she misses the back end. Burns work that ball around. Less than four to go. Now they're keying Maggie wow. Johnson and she was hit. She's shooting three, Mike. That's a break for the Spartans. Walk will be called for the foul. That's Heritage Christian's last to give. So the Spartans will be in the bonus for the last 355. Maggie Johnson, 5'9". Freshman, 
5'9 junior, I should say. Let's see if she can make the second of three. Big free throw right here. She does. This team's so young, I'm starting to call the upperclassmen. That's right. Freshmen and eighth graders. I apologize for that. Mike, as we said earlier, no seniors on the team for St. Paul Academy. There's a travel. Yes. And as we mentioned earlier, that will only help them when they get a healthy Jenna O'Brien and Io Jones back next season. They're not losing anybody, so they've got a year to build up their core. Maggie Johnson, too strong. She has a dozen. It's a three-point game. Let's see if the Spartans can get a stop here and get another crack at it. They've had their chances. Heritage having difficulty getting short range shots and that's working to the Spartans advantage. But Claiborne will be called for the foul and that's the Spartans last to give. That's the second on Jonte Claiborne. 313 left, that sends Walk to the line. And we'll remind you that at halftime, Michael Johnson's going to go down to the floor and get some interviews with some of those hometown crowd. Cheering on their Spartans. And we'll have first half stats and analysis as always. Walk makes the back end. That's your first point of the game. And a timeout. Timeout by Heritage Christian. 3.13 to go, 22 to 18. And for defense on SPA, still looking to establish a presence inside. Yeah, SPA, they're playing a 2-3 zone to really shut down Miss Anderson, and for the most part, it seems to be working. But Heritage Christian, Mike, they're showing good patience. They really work the ball around well, so it's all going to come down to boxing out on both sides. It's almost a chess match between these two coaches, one having experience with the Minnesota Vikings, knowing the daily grind that entailed, even if it was in the 70s. And the other, playing at MSU Mankato, Division II school, doesn't get a lot of press because it's Division II, which is unfortunate in some cases, but she knows what the experience is like and the grind that comes with playing college basketball. Many will tell you it's almost like a job. Absolutely. It's two different generations, too, competing. Milt Sunday from the Vikings of the 70s and Anna, a modern young woman. It's a chess match with moving pieces. Player control foul on SPA. So no free throws for Heritage Christian, although they do get possession. That foul was on number 11, Lauren Adamite for the Spartans. That's her first personal. And the fans aren't worried as SPA Gets another break, Heritage turns it over. Fans aren't worried because again, they saw this team almost pull off a comeback behind Brooklyn Center. That's right, the Spartans are a second half team, so as close as they can stay in the first half is a bonus. Maggie Johnson for a moment looked like she was ready to shoot from NBA range, but thought wiser. Not too hard of a pass, another turnover for the Spartans. The Spartan Spirit Squad at it again. Walk. That one's off. Rebound, Adamite. <laughs> SBA now taking their time. Going to Claiborne. And she kicks out, no shot clock. Of course, you can take as much time as you want on a possession. There's a reach on number 30 for Heritage. Another foul on Laird. And again, <clears throat> SPA in the bonus. Jonte Claiborne will be shooting one and one. Okay, one now. 
Claiborne, physical player, likes to drive to the baskets. Draw fouls, of course. That's foul number three on Kate Laird. Misses the one and one. Anderson. Again, 12 points for Anderson, matching Maggie Johnson. Those two are almost playing as if they have a score to settle. Another, steal. another turnover on the Spartans. Krellum with the steal. Peeper. Bullseye. Seven points. For Natalie Peeper. Heritage with their largest lead of the game. Applebaum is open on the right side, but she's short. Anderson with the rebound. And muscles her way for the basket. Anna Voltmer will probably have a few items to know for her SPA team at halftime. With 47 seconds left, I think her first thing is we have to stop Anderson. That's it. She's the key to their game. And the Spartans do not get back on defense. And to Anderson's credit, she takes it to the basket. Spartans are going to have to maybe change up their defense, go to a box and one. Anderson has scored half of Heritage's points, almost half, I should say, 14 of 29. The biggest margin of the game, 11 points. For Heritage Christian, there's an over and back. Backboard violation on Peeper. So with 30 seconds left, we'll see if SPA can get some momentum. Adamai looking for Claiborne, and Claiborne fouls Walk, half step behind. Yeah, again, Mike, these are turnovers. They gotta be careful where you put the basketball. It's tough to get it inside with a lot of hands in the way. Certainly not what Voltmer was looking for. And if this game ends up mirroring Brooklyn Center's game, she talked to her SPA roster at halftime of that game and said, folks, I'm expecting a different team in the second half. I'm sure she will be using that speech again for halftime of this game. Absolutely, Mike. If they're going to get back in this game, obviously they got to hit their shots, but they've got to play better defense. So we'll see what they can do. 15 seconds. Playboard is short. Heritage on a 9-0 run. And they have a chance to add to it with five seconds. Peeper looking inside. Good hustle by Barry Applebaum. They might get one second back on the clock. Well, they have a clock that does use the tents on the other side. We can't see it from here. Oh. And Nelson with a buzzer beater. That what a time for her first field goal, but for SPA, that's exactly what they wanted to avoid. That's, that's almost inexcusable to just let them get that ball inside for that easy, easy basket. The catch and shoot, so Heritage will walk to the locker room with a 33-18 lead, and SPA will go back to the drawing board, figure out how to address this. Again, they came back from a 17-point deficit at halftime, and Brooklyn Center made a game out of that, so Michael's going to go down and find some... SPA fans to chat with, and we'll come back with our first half stats and analysis shortly. Mike Pete in here, and while we don't have the Cameron Crazies since we're not in North Carolina, we've got the Briggs Crazies, some of SPA's most faithful fans, and they've got a spokesman here, Daniel Porter, and you guys are very supportive for every SPA game. What br comes, brings you to come out here? It's really about the love of the game for us. Just do it day after day. It's trying to support the school and just support sports in general, really. So tell me how this got started and uh, how you've become sort of a tradition here at Briggs Gymnasium for Spartans basketball. Well, uh, it's a long tradition which dates back to like 8 o'clock this morning. There was an <laughs> announcement, the blue sheet, blue sheet announcements. Uh, it said that the game was going to be on television. <laughs> that was really all it took. So it brought out the diehard supporters. <laughs> 
So you were warned and you came out here. And what does it came mean? Came out in bulk. I mean, I'm just speaking for thousands if you look at the... <laughs> so you, you find out it's going to be on TV and then the SPA teams, both of them kind of in rebuilding mode. So what does it mean for a team that might be ignored by media, perhaps other folks, to have this kind of experience? I think it's pretty cool, and I think they shouldn't sleep on us because they can ignore us for now, but we're going to be back in the spotlight very soon, especially if we keep getting this kind of support. So, Not just support. They've got a young team, a, a young core that they have to build on for several years. They've got a new coach who has postseason experience, and what is that going to do for the SPA program? I think we should be, I mean, probably like conference championships, state championships in the future, building on success, experience, new coach. And tell me, how did you manage to convince the rest of the Briggs crazies to come here with you? Was it all just a one group thing, or did someone spearhead it and uh, absorb the others? Were you just really interested in the idea of being on television? <laughs> it's really, I mean, <laughs> so you're just hemming it up, is what you're saying? I mean, it's a lot. It's so what if we really have partially the love of the game? <laughs> so what if we do a game, or there's a game that's not on TV? Will you show up then too? A game not on TV. Yes, just to absolutely. This is a tradition starting today, going forward in the well, future, 10, school. 15, 20 school. years, state championships, Briggs Crazies. Write it down. <laughs> Mark those words, Mark ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mark this date. Mark this date, mark this time, mark those words. They are coming, and they are coming out in full force. So if there's any opponents out here that dare enter in the Briggs Gymnasium, you got to deal with these guys. you got you got to come through us, honestly. And us and T-Phones and the thousands of loyal fans we have over there at this section. And then perhaps last question here. Is there anyone you'd like to say hi to that might be watching on television since this inspired you to come down here? Anybody? My Twitter, emagni28 on Twitter. <laughs> Give me a follow. Uh, emagni28 on Twitter. Kobe, LeBron, Derek Rose, Rock Kevin Durant, Barack, all the other NBA players. Dick Vitale, I know you're watching. Call me. I want your yeah, job. baby. <laughs> Bricks crazies, baby. <laughs> emagni28, follow him on Twitter. I think we got just about every type of plug we can fit in this broadcast. A history-making broadcast tonight. This is, live, right? uh, this is broadcast, but we'll be, rest assured, we're going to get you your, the credit you deserve for coming out here and just supporting the SBA is team. In, is it in HD? Will the game be, in, if be broadcast in HD? I got, I got 3D glasses. He's got 3D glasses. <laughs> we're going to have to work on our 3D broadcast now. He's got the 3D glasses on. Yeah. It's beautiful, really. <laughs> it, it's. Powerade. Powerade and Gillette. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our own walking plugs here. Those are the official. Those are the official sponsors of the Briggs Crazies. Any other corporations who might be watching at home, if you're interested, call me up. Emagni28. You can Twitter him. My name is Daniel Porter. I am on Facebook. Hit me up. Briggs Crazies is taking options for uh, for expanding our sponsorship. If you just joined us, we have thrown all formality out the window. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. And congratulations on your unwavering support <laughs> of SBA basketball. Yes, unwavering right. support of the announcers. Yeah. They support everyone. We'll be back with our first test stats and analysis after this if I can survive. Fist bump. Ah. Fist bump. And we welcome you back to high school girls basketball on TSB television as we start the second half between Heritage Christian Academy and St. Paul Academy. Heritage Christian with a 15 point lead, 33-18. We'll go over the leading scores in a second. But SPA really looking to shut down Lauren Anderson, number 20. If they can do that and get some shots to fall, the Spartans will mount a comeback similar to what they did against Brooklyn Center. Mike, Heritage Christian is showing good patience. You know, they don't need to score. They need to, the clock is their friend. So SPA is going to have to come out of the zone at some point and put pressure on the ball. No shot clock, so theoretically Heritage could run the ball out for 17 minutes and 15 seconds, but I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah, that was an ill-advised shot. Here come the Spartans, see if they can convert. Maggie Johnson inside to Erica Miller, who is a little left. Up. Oh. There's a break. Turnover. Should be Spartan ball. And the leading scorer, Heritage Christian, Lauren Anderson with 14 points, Natalie Peeper with seven, 
Hughesby with four, Nelson with two, Laird with one. For SPA, just two players on the board. Maggie Johnson with 12 and Lauren Adamite with six. I imagine they'll want to spread that out a little bit. Yeah, they need other players to score to mount this comeback. Basketball's five on five, very hard to win with five on two. That should be Spartan ball. And it is. I perhaps had one of the craziest interviews I ever had with the Briggs crazies, as we're calling them. They might look to find a nickname that might start with B if they want to go with the alliteration, but just a very energetic group. And that's exactly what SPA and all schools should have to get that fan support. That's right. There's another turnover on the Spartans. They've got to protect the basketball. Two turnovers already this half. No one has scored yet in the second. Lauren Anderson, wide, and nope. walk with the rebound, no foul called, incidental contact. The Spartans need to go for those rebounds. Peeper gets the bounce. That was a big shot. She was a couple feet beyond the three-point arch. And a big three, Heritage with a two-to-one edge in points. Miller, bounce to Fiedler. Fiedler, no good. Gets her own rebound. Beautiful shot. Molly Fiedler on the board. Let's see if the Spartans can get a stop here. The third SPA player to get on the scoreboard and she'll make the papers tonight. Peeper again. That one's off. Nelson with the board. Peeper with another try. Bullseye. It's no surprise, Mike. She's their leading scorer. The Spartans got to watch two girls, and they can shut down this team. Maggie Johnson with an answer of her own as she drains her third tray of the game. All right, let's see if the Spartans can get a stop here and climb back in this game. They're down by 16 but they're getting some offensive momentum now, getting some shots to fall. And there's still plenty of time for a run. As we mentioned, the SPA, usually a second half team. But Maggie Johnson having a nice game. Yeah, at some point, Mike, I expect them to come out man to man. They're not gonna be able to let Heritage Christian run so much time off the clock. And Heritage has proven they can shoot against that zone defense. Laird, got it. That's your first field goal. Well, there was a mismatch down low and they took advantage of it. 41-23. Fiedler, oh, nice, nice feed to Adamite, but she can't finish. Miller with the rebound. Kicks out to Applebaum. No good. And a foul on Heritage Christian. No, it's ruled against SPA. That's too bad. SPA really worked the ball inside. They just missed a bunny. Fouls on Applebaum. Peeper. She's found her stroke from behind the line, and that's not what SPA wanted to see. Nope. They got to put someone on her. She's going to keep shooting. They're going to find her and let her loose. Peeper with 16 points, nine in this half. Miller, too strong, rebound. Anderson. Anderson, oh. got an open lane, finishes. I've got too a feeling Volmer, she's making the signal already, timeout. That does not surprise me. Yeah, not a good run for the Spartans. They're down by 23 points, Mike, with 12.54 left. They've got to change up their defense. Going back to the first half, Heritage Christian on a 24 to five run. SPA, certainly gonna draw up a few more plays here. 
And with this kind of challenge, I know SME found themselves in this situation several times this year. What kind of lessons does that teach Voltmer and the young SPA team that they can use in future seasons? Well, Mike, they've been here before. When they were against Brooklyn Center, they were down by 25 points, but it all starts on the defensive end. You've got to play good defense. I expect her to come out in a man-to-man -man and see if they can shut down Heritage Christian. And on the offensive side, they've got to convert their shots. They've got some good looks inside. They're not converting. They're not hitting their 10, 12-foot shots, and you've got to put the ball in the hoop. And the chemistry is certainly there. And that's a big step for SPA. Voltmer talked to me before the game. And after game, she will often ask her players, well, what do you think we need to do for the next game? What do you think we need to do to improve? So she really does a lot to get her players involved in diagnosing themselves, analyzing themselves, and really understanding how basketball works fundamentally. Double dribble on Applebaum. And as I expected, Mike, they are in man-to-man. -man. Let's see what the Spartans can do now. Someone's got to step in. It's Applebaum with the steal. But it's stolen right back by Peeper. Everyone going down for the ball, though. And Nelson was touched. Fouls on Applebaum, her second. Drive to the hoop. Laird can't get the cleanup. And so far, the man to man seems to be working for SPA defensively. Let's see if they can translate that offensively. Hannah Johnson. Yes. So Erica Miller is getting the ball inside, Mike. She's being triple teamed, so she made the right decision to kick it out, and Hannah Johnson converted. Spartans need a stop here. And if it's a bright spot for SPA, they're getting more players on the scoreboard now. Traveling violation on Nelson. She got off her pivot. So that man-to-man -man is getting to Heritage Christian. Anderson with the steal. Peepers open down court, and she shorts. Scramble. Spartan ball. Yes, as they have the possession arrow. Spartans caught a break there, Mike. Heritage Christian had an easy layup. They did not convert. The Spartans need to score on this possession. That's been their bright spot defensively. Heritage Christian having some difficulty making those point-blank shots. They almost seem to do better when they have a player in their face. Adamite nearly wasn't ready. And Miller's fouled by Walk. All right, let's see if the Spartans can convert an inbounds play here. Just like Heritage Christian scored so easily at the end of the first half. Just over 11 minutes to go in the second half. Set it up and try it again. Hannah Johnson to inbound again. This time finds her target. It's Miller with a player in the face. Too strong. Maggie Johnson with a fadeaway bank. Big rebound by Maggie Johnson. Now they've got it under 20 points. Let's see if they can get another stop here. She has the game high right now with 17.
Walk after Hughesby, stripped. Oh. And she got it off Fiedler. Oh, that was not a good call. That was tipped out of bounds by Heritage Christian, but a bad break for the Spartans. We're up here, not down there, but it was a tough call. Rebound, Adamite. Here come the Spartans. And so for the SPA fans, no harm, no foul. Adamite, no good. Heritage Christian ball. They have a 19 point lead. Brellin back in for the Eagles. Peeper drives, can't get the runner. Rebound, Fiedler. Here come the Spartans. Fiedler getting a lot of minutes, even though she's an eighth grader. Peeper went for the steal. And then Johnson driving left. Finish, finish. 9.33 in half number one. Turn Pe around. Peeper driving. That should be Spartan ball. Oh. Heritage ball, it's a tough angle we have from up here. It's not orthodox by any means. We're actually in the cardio room looking out one of their windows. Every gym, of course, bringing its own flavor. There's a turnover. And challenges, and there it is, another turnover. Adamite. Fiedler looking to Johnson, now kicking out to Maggie. Thought about a three. Finding Adamite instead. There she goes. And she puts it down. Adamite was quiet for a while. Scored the first few points of this game. Now she has eight. There's a turnover. Kick that ball, Blue. Okay, Mike, a basket by the Spartans here, and they will have this to 15 points. Maggie Johnson going to Miller. Miller, how she put that in? Great shot by Erica Miller. 46-31, Spartans trail, but trying to mount a comeback. And the newly minted 17-year-old gets on the scoreboard. And a foul on SPA with 8.15 to go. Miller averaging 6.2 a game. Foul is on Adamite, her second. Good play by Barry Applebaum. Jump ball, Heritage Christian with the possession arrow. But the Spartans being a little more aggressive defensively now. Oh, that Hughes was well-designed play and the Spartans did not stick with her. Eight minutes. Time running out on the Spartans. Adamite hit the backboard. And a foul on Miller. We couldn't see it from here. It was away from the ball. That's her third. Interesting battle right in front of us, Mike. You've got Maggie Johnson and Anderson of Heritage Christian really going at it. Only fitting, given how those there two is. have been the leaders. Johnson with the poke, but Applebaum wasn't ready. Someone's got to step up. Hughesby again, too strong. And Miller picks up the loose ball.
Applebaum went down almost like a Sydney Rice type catch. You certainly can't fault them for the effort the Spartans bring. No, she was cutting to the basket, Mike. She just got tripped up somehow. Things can be tough to see sometimes with a bang bang sport like basketball is. There we go, Spartan ball. That heads to the bleachers. Substitution. Nelson and Laird coming in. Laird has three fouls. This game moving very quickly. Adamite's been open a few times, just hasn't found the shot. Applebaum is fouled. Good now, drive to the basket by Barry, Mike. Nelson draws it. Applebaum has yet to get on the score column. We're looking to do so here. Average is 6.6 .6 a game. Very good ball handler and can take it inside and out. Fifteen point deficit. Every possession's critical. Hughesby, swish. You know, Mike, you gotta give Heritage Christian a lot of credit. They're just setting up the open shot when they're down on the floor. Hughes really worked the ball well. Hughesby with eight off the bench. Nelson with the deflection. Spartan ball. There it is. And we'll try again. There's an offensive foul on Barry Applebaum. Six minutes and counting. For two teams looking to get some foundation for the future. Anderson with the end one. And she's feeling it. Getting high fives from her teammates. That's a fourth foul on Barry Applebaum. She's racked up the fouls quickly. And now Hannah Johnson will come in for Barry Applebaum. Lauren Anderson with 19 points. Maggie Johnson looking to get some momentum. Can't do it. Nelson with the rebound. Laird is fouled. 5.30 left in the second. Fouls on Fiedler. It's SPA's last to give. And again, regardless of the outcome here, They were one foul short on the scoreboard, so Heritage in the bonus here. But regardless of the outcome, in the case of SPA, again, it's about the big picture, taking the baby steps now to build a program later. And it's something even Lindsey Whalen of the Gophers of their pastime knows. She had a struggling Minnesota team her first year. Before you know it, Minnesota basketball becomes the hot ticket around here. And Hannah Johnson with her fourth point on the give and go. 5.05. 
Laird's open, puts it in. Yeah, Spartans giving up the baseline there, Mike, and that's an easy path to a basket. Maggie Johnson is poked. Oh. And it can't get the bounce. And another foul. Boy, that did not look like a foul, Mike. It looked like a jump ball to me. Spartans not getting the breaks that they need. That sends Laird to the line again. She has five points on the evening. What it came down to, SBA getting a lot of chances, just not finding the basket. Again, just showing their youth. But the thing with youth is they're very teachable and have a lot of room for growth. There's a walk. Nelson walks again. And that's what this SPA team is going to do. Just keep getting older, they'll grow, they'll have more knowledge. Again, no seniors on this team. So they're going to have everybody back next year. And they brought up quite a few eighth graders to play on the lower divisions, if not varsity. It's just a, a way to get some spirit, get some enthusiasm back into the girls' basketball program at a school that's known for its soccer prowess. The boys' team finishing fourth this year in the Class A state tournament. Mike, it's interesting. The SPA boys' basketball team last year finished as a section runner-up, which was one of their furthest journeys into postseason in many, many years. So it can be done. That program has been rebuilt, and the girls are going to try to emulate that as well. And the boys this year are having a solid season, and the girls, I imagine, in the next year or two will be in that position as well. You know, it's interesting. Heritage Christian, they've got three seniors on the roster, and evidently it makes, makes a difference. Maggie Johnson, short. Oh, she's doing everything she can. Hannah Johnson clunked Miller with the ball. And she's all right. Happy birthday, Erica. That was uh, certainly a wake-up call. Yeah, not, not what she wanted to receive. Those will take a breather. Anderson. Oh, blocked by Maggie Johnson. And she's open down court. And a hard foul. Almost looked intentional, but Maggie's going to the free throw line. I heard somebody at down court trying to call it intentional, but the rep officials do not rule it as such. Okay, two shots. Johnson, a junior, what do you think she'll bring next year? Again, this team will have O'Brien and Io Jones back to get them some leadership on the roster again. Well, Mike, just having a potent scorer like Jenna O'Brien in the lineup, she's a thousand point scorer for SPA, will open up things for Maggie and the other girls on the team. And that's why, among other reasons, SPA's record is a little deceiving. Again, not at full strength. So you really don't get a full glimpse of what this team is capable of. And I'm really going to be curious on what we'll see next year now that they've had some time to work under and a system. That's right. Next year, Mike, I expect you'll see an all senior lineup for the Spartans when Jen O'Brien comes back, Io Jones, You'll have Maggie Johnson, Erica Miller, and Barry Applebaum. Plus, the added bonus is you've got a lot of players with varsity experience. I imagine Feather will be getting plenty of minutes off the bench next year. Got it. 
And that's something that schools, perhaps like Heritage, schools that are in St. Paul Academy section, even some tri-metro schools are going to have to take into account. You've got to deal with a senior heavy team, but you're going to deal with some players off the bench who have some experience that other schools may not have. Anna Johnson used up her dribble. Jump ball, Heritage Christian possession, 2.02 left, and Eagles are sending in the reserves now. Game really came down to that run that happened late in the first half. It was back and forth until that point. But for a team like SPA, as probably as other games, Anna will go back and ask her kids, well, what do you think we need to do? What do you think we need to get better on, improve? They're excited to come to play now. Maggie Johnson will get more free throws. So the building blocks are there. And every time you rebuild a program or hit the reset button metaphorically, you have to go through a few humps. Missed the second free throw. Doesn't put much of a damper on her night, though. She has 18 points. Did about all she could to keep her team in the game. Shots just weren't there tonight. And here come... Spartan Reserves now coming in. Alex Miller, Katie Adamite, another eighth grader. Miller, a freshman. And Sarah Roman's an eighth grader, so we're going to get a look at the youth and the future of SPA basketball. That's going to be a very interesting roster to look at next year. You're going to have a senior heavy starting five, and then off the bench you're going to have players who are going to be there for the next three or four years. That's right. And they're going to be players with varsity experience, so that's going to go a long way for the Spartan basketball program. Courtney Peterson at the line. She'll make the papers tonight. Peterson, 5'6", freshman guard. Rebound by the Spartans. Katie Adamite. Well, let's see what the youth of SPA can do well. The veteran leadership is still there. Maggie Johnson with her 20th point. And now she overtakes the game high. Fry Anderson, and Anderson not in the lineup. Jump ball, Spartans take possession. So it looks like Johnson will finish with the game high tonight. The Spartans are not giving up to their credit. See if they can pull within 16. Applebaum. And as no you, foul. As you mentioned, that's something that will help Johnson next year when you get O'Brien back, who scored a thousand points. When Jones returns, you've got a proven scorer in Johnson. You know she'll be solid off the bench or in the starters' role, whatever role she has. And SBA is going to have a few scoring threats next year. Okay, Spartans inbounding the ball, trailing 56-38. 39 seconds left in regulation. Johnson gets her own rebound. She was calling for it. Yeah, she still wants it. Applebaum is fouled. Looks like Barry is going to be shooting three free throws. She will indeed. And number 10 just followed out, Mike, for Heritage Christian, but Rebecca she, Wolk. She had a good game tonight. Three points. So on the score chart, not a huge night, but defensively, just Heritage Christian stayed on their assignments this time.
Berry gets the back end of that three. She has three points on the night. Nelson poked away. Maggie Johnson open again. This time she'll get the layup that she was looking for. Little icing on the cake, 22 points for Maggie Johnson. And definitely going to be a player to watch over the next season and what, two or three games left on this season. Big night tonight. Just a little bit short. But SBA will go back to the drawing board and figure out how to improve, what to learn from this game as they do with every game. And again, just all part of the baby steps instilled by Anna Voltmer. That's right, Mike. A disappointing loss, but I have to give credit to Heritage Christian. They really turned it on halfway through the first half and played really well defensively. And on the offensive side, they hit their shots. Anderson with 19 points, and then Peeper had those three trays. That certainly did not help the SPA cause, but you have to give credit for Maggie Johnson on SPA side. Even though it was a losing effort, she just did not give up, did anything she could to get herself even the slightest bit of an opening for a shot. Yeah, Maggie, uh, Maggie was on today with her shot, her game, and her teammates played well and hard. So we're going to try to get a word with Maggie Johnson in a moment as we wrap up our coverage here at Briggs Gymnasium of high school girls basketball. Stick around. Mike Peden here with Maggie Johnson, the game's high score tonight with 22 points. SPA came up a little bit short. It really came down to that big run by Heritage Christian Academy. But with a young SPA team, how do they continue the learning process? We're working really hard as a team. I think this year was more so as a learning and getting better and kind of learning how each other play with one another. And I think next year is going to be a really successful season with Good, a good hand of um, seniors, and our young girls are improving a lot. You're going to get a couple of those older players back, Iowa Jones and Jenna O'Brien, who can't play this year because of injury. So what are you learning from this experience, kind of becoming the de facto leader, if you want to say that, for this team? I think it's good for everyone to take on um, new roles this year. Jenna O'Brien was our leading scorer last year, and it'll be really helpful to have her back next year. And this year kind of has, op has opened new doors for everyone else to step up and play as hard as they can. Describe the transition with coaches this year with Anna Voltmer and her system and what's different about it and what's new and maybe what's the same. I think they really want to transform this program and it's really helpful actually. I think we needed some new fresh people to come in and change something and kind of make this, uh, make the basketball program at SPA a lot stronger. They have a C team and a JV team, something they didn't have last year, and similar situation to what she dealt with at MSU or MSU Mankato. And what have you learned so far? I think the most, it's really helpful that they have so much experience as coaches, as players. Last year, our coach was uh, had a lot of experience as a coaching, but it's nice to have someone that is experienced from actually playing on the court. And she tells me that your team, no matter what the record is, no matter what the score is, they're excited to play every game. They're excited to come to practice. They're really buying into the system. What's the chemistry that you're sensing being a veteran of this team? I think the energy of every single player is there, and I think it's going to continue to be there, and hopefully we can continue to build and get more people in the program. And what will other schools need to look out for next year when you get your leaders back and when you have all those eighth graders who become freshmen and have all that experience ready to go off the bench? I think we're going to be a huge offensive threat with Jen O'Brien back and Io. And defense, I think, is our best for our team. We have really learned the main concepts from our coach, and defense helps create our offense. And finally, is there anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching this game on television or online? My grandparents. Thank you for watching. <laughs> well, don't forget the, the SPA crazies. They were came out in the big droves to support you tonight. Yes, it's nice to have fans because we don't always have them. Well, who knows? This might be the start of a huge transformation. Uh, we did a game a few years ago at MPA, and all of a sudden they got a big gymnasium. You never know. You might get one. That would be very nice. I hope we can 
I mean, within the next year, maybe get a new gym. You never know. We have that kind of effect around here in the Tri-Metro, it seems, with the <laughs> schools looking to build up. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us, and this will be a fun team to watch, especially next year. Thank you. Mickey Johnson of SPA, that does it from here. Heritage Christian Academy with the 56-41 win. For everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.